Are you looking for animals? The darkness of the night? Fire? Well, you've come to the right video. Welcome to the Night Safari! The ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the creatures of the night will be on the ground. Let's talk to some animals. Visit some zookeepers. It's very nice to meet you. They didn't laugh. And finally answer the question deep in Kim's mind. Why did it appear scream at me on a tram ride when I was 10? Here's a nature documentary, uh, courtesy of Kim. If I was not mic'd up, you could hear them chomp. Unfortunately, I am. How about I just mimic the sound so that the audience at home can understand what it sounds like. This is the spotted hyena. A fun fact is that we have spotted them. I loved you in Lion King. And here you see the majestic lion. Oh, it's so cute. Look at the mane. It looks so nice. She just woke up from a nap. And we continue our journey. And here you can see the bear. Just kidding, we don't see any bear. And we're leaving. I spoke too soon. Move to your left. Anyway, these animals sense danger. They stamp their feet and make a high-pitched sound. Which is exactly what I do. Is that a deer or an oddly shaped rock? It was a rock. I hate crickets. As we are currently filming this, the Night Safari is celebrating its 25th birthday, which means the Night Safari is a millennium. Have a think about that, baby boomers. And the most iconic thing about it since its opening is, hey, surprise, surprise, it's animals, so let's talk to people who care for them. Okay, my responsibility is to look after animals. Okay. Morning when you come to work, go around, check all the animals, whether they are doing fine, because they have any uh, fights during the night and so on. If everything is okay, then we will start our basic husbandry. We have plants. We have Greta. We have Bella. We do conditioning mm -hmm. for checking of the teeth. Because he used to have uh, dental issues. So that's why we train him to open the mouth so that we can observe the teeth inside and if anything needs to be treated, we just help them to just clean a bit. But, but, okay. Checking on your paws for any injuries. <laughs> also, do some enrichments for them. So, we will hang any of the corners. So, we will put the food in and let them sit down, take their own sweet time to just sit down there, play with the tongue to pick out the food from there. Sometimes they will do their own hunting, like the bird fly into the dens. Okay. They will just tap. It happens a few times, but yeah. too bad the bell. <laughs> we can't do anything. I do like them as a pet, but always keeping in mind. They could kill you. <laughs> yeah, they can kill you. The night safari is lit with what they call moon glow lighting, which was designed by British consultant Simon Corder, who also designed the lighting for Phantom of the Opera. Hey. Hey, what's it like to be a tour guide in night safari, I hear you ask. Why are you asking me? I mean, I work in video. Oh, you mean like, ask an, ask an actual tour, tour guide? Yeah, 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 we, we, could, we could do that. Yeah, we could go do that. Let's go. I'm a wildlife guide in uh, St. Paul Night Safari. I love animals so much. This has been one of my childhood dreams. <laughs> to be with animals. So I got the chance to eventually be here and it's been such an amazing experience by far. Oh my gosh. Yes. We're experiencing a man experiencing yes. his dream. <laughs> this is real life. So they're, they're, very, all looking at us. they're very concerned. Oh, okay, okay. 
we provide really great security of our animals and okay. for us as well. Okay. We have a cattle grid. Cattle grid is in between of every exhibit. Okay. This is to provide safety for us and also the animals okay. from crossing over to another exhibit. Oh, one time, when I was on a tram when oh, I was yeah? very little, a tapir squealed at me Squeal. real loud <laughs> and I was very scared. Oh. Is that normal? <laughs> do they do that? Uh, they do that uh, at times. So this is how they communicate to each one of them. Hey, why you go so far? <laughs> Come here, don't go so far. Okay. So I found myself in the middle of a gossip session. Yes. <laughs> okay, that mystery has been solved. <laughs> Feeding an elephant as a so, tram goes by. Do you got it? Oh, oh no, I'm dropping it. <laughs> Oh, you got it. I'm so sorry. Oh no! <laughs> there you go. She got it. <laughs> she got it. We do have some uh, enrichment boxes. So, okay. uh, to provide them some enrichment so they have some food for them okay. to chew as well. So they're not bored? Yeah, so they are not bored. I see. Yeah, or else we don't have Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> <laughs> she, can, she can swipe on yes, the phone, swipe, I guess. Swipe. <laughs> we, could, we could get you an iPad. We'll see about that. Probably the most handsomest of all bull elephants. Chawang is the icon. He is. Such a majestic looking bull. Everyone who comes by, everybody wants to see Chama. So they know that uh, we stop feeding. <laughs> yeah. So they don't frame me already. Oh. <laughs> They're annoyed. Besides having the internet to load and skip that Grammarly ad, there are a couple of other things we take for granted. For example, the lush greenery that makes up the habitat of these beautiful animals. So let's get cultured. Horty cultured. No one likes that joke. As much as possible, we would like to have thematic planting, okay. whereby we mimic the habitat of the actual animals. For example, at the fishing cat trail, mm -hmm. we will try to remain hidden along the shrubs, okay. the tall grasses. Mm -hmm. So we will try to mimic that by planting uh, tall grasses along the ridge for them to have that environment where they can pounce on the fish. Second is, uh, of course, visibility for our guests. Okay. How we strategically place the plants mm. so that most of the animals are not blocking them. Mm. Yes. The third one is more on the how we allow for maintenance, like uh, hiding, screening, hardscapes, oh, uh, netting, I see. the buildings which is sometimes unsightly. This is a long tail makal. You go to Makrichi and Upper Sleta, they'll be literally begging for food at the side. Sometimes no. you pity them, but you can't. But you can't because it, in a way, it affects their natural way of finding for food. They are yeah. so dependent on human feeding them that they stop looking. They stop looking for food and just forage people houses and no. become a nuisance. Is he allowed to do that? Yeah, he's allowed to do okay. that. Okay. <laughs> so if they keep eating it, you're gonna have to keep coming back to plant. Mm. So that's why we have to find a way. For example, find new species, uh, plant certain areas away from them. It's not stopping him. He's yeah. he's just going he for just it. Enjoy. Yeah. Okay. You go ahead and enjoy, boys. <laughs> have a good time. <laughs> Let's talk history. There was this piece of land that was just left. It was dilapidated secondary forest. You know, there was talk about hotels, golf courses, uh, chalets. One of our uh, the, the, uh, brainstorming uh, team was uh, the former director of the National Zoo in Sri Lanka, Mr. Lindy Alves. So he mooted this whole idea of an Asian night safari. The whole storyline was to take visitors into a wilderness and for them to just ride on a tram to see animals do what they naturally do in a very natural setting. That's how Night Safari was born. The Night Safari is truly an experience worthy of their three Michelin stars and thank you so much to all these people who made the video possible, especially those who gave up their time to let us interview them, especially Bella. Only Bella. No, I'm joking. Thank you for watching. Click here to subscribe. Click here for our previous episodes. Uh, click there, here to to play this video again. Uh, click Control Alternate Delete to open up Task Manager. Uh, click the X 